Hello, welcome to today's Canva tutorial. Today we will be creating a tomato sauce Instagram post design. And without wasting any time, let's get right into it. So the first thing I did was open a blank canvas. This is a uh, 1080 by 1080 post, Instagram post. It's a square post. You can uh, feel free to create whatever dimensions you want or you could follow and create exactly as I have created one. Um, so the first thing I'll do is try to import uh, some elements onto this blank workspace. And I'll do that by first clicking on elements here. Then I'll search for a ketchup bottle. I'll come down here to photos. There are many different types that uh, we are offered graphics, photos, videos, frames, but we'll come down to photos, click on see all, and the ketchup bottle I'll be using is this one here. I'll click once on it to place it onto my blank canvas. Once it's been placed on my blank canvas, I will reduce its uh, size proportionally by dragging one of the corners down like that and then i would like to place this dead center on my canvas and i can do that by making sure i'm still selected on the actual image of the tomato sauce bottle and then i'll press onto the position button here and then select center to center the bottle horizontally and then me do to center the bottle vertically. Right, we have that now. The next thing I'd like to do is change the background of our canvas. I think white is too plain and for this particular poster, I'd like for it to really pop. And so I will change this to a red. I'll click onto the background, making sure that it's highlighted as you can see by this purple border. Then I'll click on background color here. Click on this plus sign to add a new color. And then type here in the in the color code. I would type FF and then four zeros like that. That is the color code I want to use. That's the red that I want to use. All right. Uh, starting to look good, but I feel like um, we could make the bottle stand out a little bit more by adding a glow behind the bottle, which is between the background and the bottle. And I would do that by adding an element called round shadow and search. The particular round shadow one that I want to use is this one over here, but feel free to click on CO and explore other shadows. I will choose this one here and I will stretch it by dragging one of the corners. And if I hold shift, uh, if I hold and, and drag the other side as well, uh, I can fill the whole canvas. But we now have a problem here. Our shadow is at the front of the, the bottle and is obstructing our bottle, but we want it to be behind the bottle. And in this particular reason, um, uh, design, we're going to use the shadow as a glow. So the first thing I would do is make sure the shadow is selected. And then I will click on the color here. And then I'll click add a new color. And then I would type a certain code, which is FF7902. And I think this is the, the glow level that I want and color. And you could have easily done this by um, just, you know, with if you don't know what code you want to use, you can experiment and um, drag this around here until you get the color that you you want. But for me, I already know that I want this one. So click enter. And then now we need to deal with the problem of 
the glow being above the bottle. We want to move it backwards. Um, there are many ways to in which we can move it back, but I will show you these two ways here. Um, the first one is to make sure the glow is or whatever element you want to move back or forward uh, is selected. Then click on position. The first way right away, uh, making sure our range is selected. We have these options like backward and send to back. Backward will always move whatever element is selected down one step. Then send back will send that element all the way to the bottom. And I will demonstrate that by moving this one step down to show you how this glow will move behind the bottle like that. I will bring it back up and show you the other way and explain what I mean by moving back and moving forward. So when I click on layers here, you will see that all the elements we've used so far are arranged in some sort of hierarchy order from the top to the bottom. And this is the way Canva layers work. And I'm sure you'll find the same applies to other design platforms. L layers are similar to how painting works on an actual canvas if you're a painter or if you've seen people paint. They start out with this blank canvas and then they start to add layers of paint to create some sort of illustration or painting or drawing. So this is what we are doing. We started out with a blank white page. We changed its color. So imagine this was me painting the canvas, which was white red. And then the next thing I did was paint a bottle, which is this bottle of tomato sauce. Then I added a glow. But because this is graphic design and we're using software, we are at liberty to do things in um, out of order and still be able to fix them. So in reality, I would have maybe wanted to, maybe I would have um, to fix this glow issue. What I want is the bottle to be in front of the glow or the glow to be behind the bottle. And I can do that by just simply dragging it under like that. All right. Now that we have that, the next thing we'll do is I'd like to move this a little bit down here and then I'll get the glow as well and move it a little bit down. I want it to be lit in this area and not uh, centered. The reason I've moved this a little bit lower is because I will be adding some text up here and some text at the bottom here. So I will reduce this bottle just a little bit more. I'll click position, arrange, and center it once more. Yeah, that is fine. I think uh, the next thing we'll do is make this more dynamic and more interesting because it's still very plain. And I will do that by adding some elements, maybe some tomato slices. I will come back here to my elements and search for tomato slice. And let's see what we will get. Uh, so we get some photos and some graphics. Let's try to see what graphics has to offer. Okay, so in graphics, I think I like this one particularly. I will select that one. I will reduce it a little bit. The first thing that stands out to me is that it doesn't feel like it doesn't blend in very well with our design. You know, it's very white and um, I'd like for it to be more warm and orange. It's just a little bit just to make it seem like the light from our setup is reflecting onto it. And the way I, the first thing I think of doing is coming here to edit whilst the slice is selected, clicking it like that and then um, changing its color by using some of these filters. And I would choose something that's a little bit warm. Um, let's see, what do they have here? I think let's try this one, Sandy. Yeah, I think it works well, but you can feel free to experiment and check out some of these other ones. You can also adjust the intensity 
you can adjust the intensity here uh, yeah I'll reduce that a little bit a lot rather and I will place that over here maybe over here somewhere like that then I will get a copy of this by by clicking here on these three circles and then duplicating and then placing it somewhere over here I will rotate it a bit so that it doesn't seem like we're just duplicating the same slice I think I like that then I will duplicate this again I will make it bigger and I want to add a little bit of depth to this design and I would do that by making some of these slices seem like they are blurred a bit, like they're out of focus. Uh, and I think that would draw our eye into the, the actual bottle of uh, tomato sauce. And I would do that by making sure the slice is selected. I'll select edit. I'll scroll down here to effects and select this blur effect. I will make sure our whole image is selected so that when I increase the blur, it blurs the whole image. I will blur it quite a lot, maybe up to 70, and then commit like that. And then I'll bring that here. And then I will bring it on the right side here and bring it a little bit in front of the, of the design. And the reason I'm doing this is, you know, to make it look like there was an explosion of tomato slices and uh, they're in motion. It gives the feeling of motion. Then I will duplicate this once more. By the way, I'm using shortcuts to duplicate. You can learn those at your own time. Uh, you'll be able to see them here. Command D, Control D. Um, and there are other mouse shortcuts you can use. So I will reduce this size a little bit and bring it down here all right this is where we are so far it's starting to look nice uh one last element i'd like to to add is some green i feel like you know i'd like to see some green so i'll search for leaf and then i will come down here to photos and particularly i will choose this leaf or this one here i think i'll choose this leaf over here and i will reduce its size and then just randomly place it around the bottle and then changing its orientation duplicate rotate it a little bit it shouldn't seem too symmetrical or too much like a pattern you know, so I'll reduce this size even a further just to make it look like there are different leaves of different sizes. I mean, in reality, they can't all be the same size. And I will duplicate this one, maybe increase that size a little bit. You know, just create some balance, just create some balance like that. Um, yeah then i'll do one last one or make it larger come back here to edit click on blur and i'll blur it to maybe 70 somewhere about there and yeah and i'll place it here in front of the bottle just so it shows some 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 depth um yeah so yeah this we have our bottle now i like the way it looks for now uh, might make some adjustments later but for the sake of the tutorial let's just assume this was perfect um all right another thing i'll do is lock this glow so this is our glow I'd like to lock it in place because I don't think I will need to move it again. So making sure it's clicked, I will right click and then click here on lock. So now 
even after I drag my mouse across the canvas and select everything, I can move the bottle without moving the glow. I can change the size of the bottle without moving the glow like that. So I've increased the size of the bottle just a little bit. Uh, yeah, I like that. The next thing I'll do quickly is to add some text. I'll add some text here. And uh, you can name it whatever you want, but I think I decided to call this golden tomato sauce. So I'll, I will copy that text and paste it here. The next thing I'll do is change this font size to 48. And then I will change the font type to this font here. ITC Bengu White, something like that. And then I will make it bold. And then I will split these words down like that. I will change the color of this font to white for now. And then I will reduce the space between the, the texts like vertically by clicking here on spacing and then reducing it like that. And then I will highlight only the word gold and then I will come down here to color, add color, I'll move this to somewhere here like a yellowish orange and then select that golden color. And I will adjust this again until I have something that pops like that. All right, so we have our title there now. The next thing I want to do is add some body text. I will come back here to text, select um, the body text. I'll bring it down here, change its color to white. Um, and then I have some small write up here that I created through ChatGPT and then I will I will place that here, I'll paste that there. I will reduce the size of the, the width and then I will come to position here and center it like that. And yeah, there we have it. This is our poster. I might just reduce this a little bit like that, bring it down a little bit to allow for some breathing and yeah, that is our golden tomato sauce poster. Um, I hope you enjoyed and learned from this tutorial. Please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials that I'll be releasing. And please feel free to comment what were your thoughts, what were your challenges, and um, any suggestions of what type of designs you would like me to, to do for another tutorial in the future. Um, Feel, uh, feel free to like and uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.